Hello and welcome back to SMB Gaming. This is KSP Exploration Episode 12, and uh, today is a launch of a 2-in-1 scanning satellite to Pole. Uh, Pole is the outermost moon of Jewel, the gas giant. It is pretty uneven. It has a surface gravity of 0.373 meters per second, so quite low. It's actually the second lowest in the system other than Gilly. And uh, this satellite is built to scan both the entire planet and uh, get narrow band scanners in order to get a more detailed view. It turns out you don't actually need surface modules to use narrow band scanners, uh, but they may improve the accuracy. I need to figure out what those actually do. So the launch is just a single core. I tried multiple cores. It was bad. I probably had to launch this six times before I just got fed up and used this design, and it worked. Pretty large uh, satellite, despite the fact that it doesn't actually weigh that much. So the staging is a uh, a mammoth engine to get it into space, and then a rhino engine to finish the orbit, and that actually was also enough to do the jewel transfer burn, which uh, this is during a transfer window, of course, and then that detaches, and I used a uh, Nerva engine, which is the atomic rocket motor, and that was used to circularize at jewel, as well as do some more maneuvering. And then finally, there was use of an ion engine at the very end, and I have a single solar panel as well as an RTG. The RTG is just for powering it when it's not using the engine, and the panel is for when it is using the engine. Uh, at Kerbin, the panel would be plenty to run the, the thruster full charge. However, uh, at Joule, the solar, solar power is less, which means that I could not actually run it at full power, and it would run out of power eventually, but it would still be able to run just at a slower rate. So, uh, the Jewel transfer burn was extremely easy. After I got into orbit, it was like three minutes later, I could just do another prograde burn, which uh, brought me all the way to Jewel, actually on the second stage, which was, uh, nice. I actually ended up with slightly a little bit of extra delta V at the end, probably enough to get to Bop, but... So, uh, Pole is one of the two outer moons of Jewel, it's, along with Bop. It has the smallest gravity of any moon in the system kind of looks like a grain of pollen. It's round like... It, it, the most similar moon I'd think to was Minmus. Pole has less gravity than Minmus. Again, 0. 0. 0.373 meters per second. Minmus is about 0. 0.49, if I'm if I'm not mistaken. Um, Pole is very uneven, though, and unlike Minmus, does not have flats. Bop, on the other hand, looks like a very large version of Gilly, but its gravity is about... Uh, surface gravity is similar to Minmus. I didn't choose that one because of its lumpy... Uh, lumpy nature. So the reason I'm going to pull, this is actually the second, well, third probe to leave the Kerbin system, if you include that the Gilly mission was actually two probes, and uh, the fourth ship, because I sent a manned flyby of Duna. So um, this is the first mission to the Jewel system, and we're not going to attempt an arrow breaking because of how far out we'll be uh, burning. So the reason for uh, coming here to Jewel was for future colonization, because Pole was my best option that I could find for colonization in the outer system, and for serving as a refuel depot. Uh, my three plans right now are to put one on Gilly, long-term plans are colonies on Gilly, Pole, and orbiting Dress, and the reasons for that is Gilly, low gravity, serves as a perfect mining station for the inner system, Moho and Eve. Uh, Dress has orbiting asteroids, which I can mine for fuel, so that's a great uh, stop to go to the other planets, even though it has a high inclination, and Jewel is, well, Jewel system is very uh, good, it has five moons to begin with, and also Elu is out there too, and Pole is the lowest gravity of these, as well as the most round of the moons that is low gravity, because Bop is much less round, so that's what I chose. Also, it's the outermost, which makes it the least delta B to reach. So, this uh, probe is just, uh, it had to use the ion engine to encounter pole, and then I found out I had a big issue, so braking in, at Joule was just propulsive, not with an atmosphere, and I found out that I was uh, going the opposite direction in the orbit, so I was in a retrograde orbit. Unless pole is already in a retrograde orbit, I'm not sure. Either way, I was going opposite, I was to pole, and the ion engine was not nearly fast enough to brake in the uh, with the pole encounter. So I burnt a little bit on that, and then I realized it was hopeless. Came out the other side, 
and now this isn't in the, this isn't in the video because it took so long but I used the single ion engine to completely kill my orbital velocity around Joule so there was a point where I would have just fallen into it from way up at 150 million meters altitude and uh, then I had to completely get all my orbital velocity back so that I was going the same direction as pole. Once I did that, it was really easy to just uh, do a quick, inc uh, not do a quick, uh, quick burn, uh, intercept pole, and send the probe to pole, and where it becomes a satellite of pole. And uh, it actually had to go into a polar orbit of pole. Yes, that that name. You know, there was actually a glitch when KSP 1.0 came out where any mission that told you to go to, like, Kerbin's poles would instead tell you to fly by pole. So you had these people, the moon, so you had these people who just started the game and they get, like, missions to fly by pole and they haven't even visited Minmus yet. It's kind of funny. So, uh, the satellite, once it got into orbit around pole, was not very hard to change the inclination because I was almost polar to begin with and then it was pretty quick to actually make it polar. And once I did that, I can deploy the big scanner, which lets me see uh, surface resources, and then the narrowband scanner works with showing me de more detailed views of the surface. Now, interestingly, I thought before that I had to have a surface scanner on the surface to see use the narrowband scanner, which shows you the little GUI. And apparently not, because I was able to use it this time without the surface scanner. I was I sent it up because I wanted, didn't want to have to send two satellites, and I figured I'd send a lander later anyway, but it worked without that. And I'm wondering, what does the surface scanner do? If you know, let me know in the comments, because it's not a science object, because it doesn't have the little science menu with transmitting options. It just says, scan conducted at each biome. So what I'm thinking is that it might increase the, uh, it, it might increase the accuracy of the narrowband scanner, like you can see more details because it is kind of low resolution right now that could be it if you know please let me know so uh, the plan for colonizing Joule uh, pole now that we have this satellite in orbit uh, I'm gonna be sending it in multiple parts it might involve a single launch but that might be too difficult the next transfer window to Joule from Kerbin will definitely be sending some parts so we're going to need a large fuel tank, which will probably be landing horizontally on its side. That will be to store fuel from mining and uh, refuel things. Going to have a, a flat module with a docking port. It will try to make it easy to land on. That might be a little difficult. I might have to use it on the sides, but that would be for refuel landers and rovers and uh, SEVs, because I probably will be able to use a SEV space bus on pole. The gravity is not too low. Uh, Using a SEV on Gilly is impractical, so I won't be able to do that. And uh, I will also be sending along a big mining module with multiple drills and an ISRU converter. Uh, that will contain all the ore tanks, and then of course habitation and power will be uh, another couple modules. And hopefully I can connect all that, although that might be a bit difficult. And once that happens, I will be able to easily launch things back into orbit, because it's really easy to get into orbit from pole and land. Uh, one of my issues is going to be the lack of flat surfaces on pole, so I am going to have to probably investigate. I might have to send an unmanned lander uh, before all this, so that might be what I send at the next window. And that lander's job will be to find a flat area, because it's very difficult to find some sort of flat area from orbit. The whole thing is covered in mountains. It's very, very uneven surface. There are 45 degree inclines at some places. So, that's the plan. And uh, for dress, that will be coming later. I probably will actually set up the dress base before I set up the pole base, uh, assuming which transfer window comes first, I think it might be dress. If not, I'm going to start sending asteroid retrieval probes to dress, and those will be able to start making the refueling station before Kerbals actually arrive years later. And again, with the pole colony, I will not be sending Kerbals with the first shipments, I'll just be sending parts, and those will land and dock together and form the colony. Uh, the Kerbals will arrive once everything is set up for them, as you would do in real life. The Gilly colony, um, coming along Gilly is much closer than the Jewel system, although it does provide less to do. Uh, that should not be an issue. The transfer windows, they come farther apart, but I will be able to uh, send parts there as well. The Gilly colony will probably not be as expansive as the pole one, but it will probably involve multiple modules. So now you can see a nice view of pole at the end uh, as you look at the screen. 
So thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe so you can have, watch more. Uh, if you want to use the comments, go ahead. Uh, someone mentioned that the comments were disabled. Just so you know, if that happens, it's not me. I'm not going to disable comments unless there's like a horde of trolls visiting the video, which there aren't. And uh, so if that's happening, it's a YouTube glitch, and just give it some time or use a different browser, and it should work. Uh, anyway, thanks for watching. See you next time.